Who? Isn't she an actress? No. I mean, maybe. Or lives or something. <laughs> She's, you remember, Kate, we met her at oh, Facebook yeah. Creator Day years and years and years ago. She was the blonde who was super sweet from the Midwest. Finding Cooper's voice. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Um, Thank God you said that because I was going to feel like a real asshole because I actually follow her. Yeah, no, yeah. she's she's super sweet. I was just texting with her. Yeah. Oh, cool name drop. Okay. I was just texting with uh, Dwight Eisenhower. So Dwight Eisenhower. Yeah, from the grave. Well, our podcast does transcend universes. If you listen to it last week. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Let's get into that too. Yeah. So are we live or did we red button? Mm -hmm. Red, did you red button? I did. Okay, great. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> How is um, Tiffany size? Tiffany size is That's more than so adequate. Rude. <laughs> That's so rude. Why are you asking me questions right now about my size, dude? It's day two of my diet. Okay, no, she's talking about the size you are on the screen. Does she want me to move my camera down? No, she's good. Because I'm so comfy, but I will do it. No, you look good. <clears throat> I just need to scoot back a little. My back is so jacked up. I'm sorry, friend. Do you want me to punch it when I come? Ew, that sounded weird. I don't know what I'm doing. Can you do me a favor and scoot the screen over? No, no, no. From your thingy, from your thing thing. Uh -huh. Can you just scoot it this way? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Good, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you're listening to this. I uh, This is uh, Take It or Leave It. Don't remember any of the intro. Jeez Louise, that's embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Take It or Leave It. Nope. Yes. Yeah. Literally. Welcome to Take It or Leave It, a podcast about shit. Yep. And I uh, have been a bit overwhelmed, and I honestly don't remember the intro. Stop talking. You sound tinny. Tinny? Yeah, like you're popping. Is, is it, are we going into the red? Like right now you're talking away from the mic. Or is it better here? I can no, stay right here. No, it's actually terrible. Is it better here? No, like your placement is great. The sound is garbage. The sound is garbage. No, I said garbage. Don't make it sound like I'm a jerk to Katie, please. The sound is garbage. It could just be my headphones. What does the audience think? How do we sound in here, guys? Talk consistently. Say the alphabet. I, A, B, C. No. D, E, F, G. That's not helpful. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Give me the P. Q, R, S. <laughs> They said sounds good. Okay, great. You actually sound worse than me. Is that what they said? Yeah. Actually? Yep. They said, I'm a little loud. You're a little tinny. I'm tinny? You're tinny. Rin tin tinny tin too. What do I do? I don't do know. Do I turn I... myself down? Six jumping jacks. Hold on. Shh. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. That's me with it turned down. I'm going to turn it up. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V. Uh, Down is like this. I've got it pretty low. I can talk like this. And I think it's okay. And then up is like this. This might be a little loud because I'm in the red right here. So what are we thinking? What's the consensus? Is this good just, right here? I can't tell. Because I'm asking our friends in the audience. Is this okay? I knew right bitch. Here? I knew that bitch. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> what is that noise at your house? Oh, you're one to talk about noises at houses, bitch. I thought I was haunted. <laughs> uh, it's my cat. <laughs> oh, that's a cat. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, 
I'll bust the windows at your car. Uh, what are we it doing? says people are saying Tiffany sounds far away. Now both are good. Maybe it's fixed. Is it fixed right now? Do we sound okay? Everybody tell us what you think. Is this all right? This is me talking into the microphone. I've been watching Resident Alien and it's such a good show and it makes me laugh out loud. Oh, it's Jebba, only, Jebba is watching that or watched it. It's the only show that makes me laugh out loud nowadays. Mm. It's so funny. Okay, <laughs> I got I got sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, great. All right, bet. All right, let's do this thing. Welcome to Take It or Leave It, an advice ish podcast hosted by two struggling moms. Uh my I'm fucking struggling and my name's Meredith. And I'm Tiffany. This podcast will discuss all things marriage, motherhood, everything in between. Please remember, we're not professionals at anything you may actually need. So any advice we give you, you can take. Or leave because it might be crap. Were you just vaping? No. Tiffany? Just now? Or in That's general? Right. Why were you out of breath? Because I'm out of shape. Oh, my God. What do you mean? When was I out of breath? I'm always I don't know. out of breath, Meredith. I don't if, know. If, if the wind blows too hard, I <laughs> call an ambulance. All right. So last week on the episode, some really strange noises appeared in the episode. And we had some very concerned listeners. Yes. I had a girl named Casey message me. And she's like, I'm listening to your podcast and I can't even concentrate on the rest of it because there's a straight up demon here. Yeah. And she time stamped it. Yep. And I listened to it and was like, oh, hell no. Nah. And I saged and I did a prayer and um, put salt outside my door. Mm. And then I sent it to you. And you received it at a bad time. I was walking alone in the neighborhood. And I played it and I heard the <laughs> and I jumped out of my skin. I looked behind me for a demon that was chasing me. Should I play I was, it for the audience in case they don't know what we're talking about? Yeah, let's see if you can play it. See if it'll pick it up. All right. So it's me talking about going on vacation. And then in the background, you can hear a creepy demon guy. Hold on. Mm -hmm. and I basically chickened out. And made it so difficult because Drew had to take the kids down one at a time and come back up. So one of the kids would have to wait. And he went down with the other one and they were like pissed. And it was very stressful because I couldn't bring myself to do it. Eventually, I did. Allegedly, because mm. we had to call the editor. Yeah, oh yeah, we did. I, I called him. I called him at like 6 p.m. And I was like, look, you're probably in the middle of dinner. We don't fucking care. How much sage do we need? Yeah. Do you know Father O'Malley? How quickly can he get here to perform an exorcism on our next podcast? I'm going to be honest. I don't buy it. Did you so know? Here, okay. Yeah. So here's the thing. Last week's episode, I had Kiki in my lap the entire time. So he said that while I wasn't talking and you were talking, the microphone was picking up Kiki's heavy breathing. And the heavy breathing or noises that she would make were getting like garbled. And he said he had to take it out of several places in the podcast. He missed this demon, but he said that there were multiple demons. And had it gone out, we would have probably ended, ended up on some like paranormal activity show. <laughs> I, here's the thing. Did we happen to look back at the live stream to see if the dog's face was by the mic? Because here's what I'll say. Mm. If we're on two separate audio tracks, maybe he did forget to silence your side while I was talking, but that did not sound like a dog to me. I want everyone to listen to this one more time <laughs> and imagine a dog. Okay. Because I don't know. I'm not really, I'm not convinced snow tubing and I basically 
chickened out and made it so difficult because Drew had to take the kids down one at a time and come back up. So one of the kids would have to wait while he went down with the other one. And they were like pissed. And it was very stressful because I couldn't bring myself to do it. Does your dog make those noises regularly, Meredith? <laughs> um, she, Kiki's pretty bad, but I've never heard her make a demon noise before, but he says it's garble. And I felt really bad because then it, I was like, I did this, right? No. Like I had the dog in my lap. I shouldn't have done that. That was silly. Um, Cause I've had, I've had Ruth sitting on the couch m multiple times while we podcast and no demon noises ever came from her. Right. But Kiki is, you know, a puppy. So she may have, you know, been letting out some noises. I would have and heard I, it. I if yeah. your dog was making deep, because I have an ear for that, because I'm an editor also. Not. I'm an editor. <laughs> not that I'm not to Phil's standard, I'm certain. But I have been editing my own shit for years and like self taught. You know what I mean? So I have an ear for background stuff. And I swear, if there was a dog, <laughs> I would have noticed. I feel like not well, that I'm calling Phil a liar. It's it's um. He said it could have also been a burp somehow that gotten garbled. I'm not exact. Look, Phil it said says, my name. No, it didn't say your name. It, I heard it say my name. Then maybe it was me. Right. What were you drunk? No, I wasn't then drunk. Of course, it wasn't you. Okay. Either way. Either way, it was very trippy. I is Phil real? People are like, is Phil actually real? We he don't is. believe it. No, I did. I, I spoke to him last night and I apologized for the fact that he works for us. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I've been wanting to do that. I literally said, hold on, let me pull up the text message. I felt so bad because I was like, this is too much. Like poor Phil. I said, um, we are forever grateful for all you do and what you put up with. We are a mess and we know it. We apologize. <laughs> and he's like, I said, I said, Phil, what's up with the demon in the ep demon voice Why are you in the episode? Demon with a D on the end. Demon. It's not he's, common. He said, damn it. I thought I stamped out like almost all of those. Let me go back in. I'll get you a new one. I said, no, no, no. We don't need a new episode. We like the demon. <laughs> And he's like, it could, it was your dog or so he doesn't know. he's, he's, he, he's saying it is. He said, I would, if you want to watch the video to confirm, but yes, it sounds like Kiki in your lap. I said, you don't have to fix it. We just wanted to make sure it wasn't a demon. We assumed Satan came for a visit and we needed to do an exorcism. And then he said, no, I think you're good. And then I apologized profusely for even calling him. Well, I didn't call him. I texted. I mean, who who calls anybody anymore? Amen. Nobody does. All right. Well, I'm not convinced. So uh, the mystery will remain. We'll see how this episode comes out. But I, mm. well, I would be interested to put Kiki back on your lap and see if we can hear any noises. I, if we can at the end, if you want, and then we'll know specifically that that was the only Kiki Kiki time. Yeah. Kiki yeah. time. Kiki time. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, we'll do that. So, yeah. So, don't freak out if you heard that last week. You can if you want because we're not sure what it was. Okay. Okay. And, um, yeah. So, oh, my gosh. Last night I was sitting on the couch and I finally caught your bedroom re reveal. Oh, well, I just posted it. Okay. I, cause sometimes I don't see your stuff for a few days. I don't know why it doesn't, you know, go through or whatever, but I, it popped up and I like fell to the floor. Really? So good. Thank you. I'm really surprised at the reception because it's kind of like not my forte. Um, and what do you I, mean? By that, but, like design, house, de bedroom design. Um, so anyway, it's a very specific look, and I did not think so many. Like it has a hundred thousand likes on 
it, uh, TikTok when I checked this morning. Oh, wow. It has like 70 something thousand likes on Instagram. I was just like, what? I thought I was going to get hate. Um, I might have, but I didn't, I didn't read. It's very those. gothic meets um, Victorian meets sex room. Oh my God, bitch. That's the exact aesthetic word for word that I'm going for. Okay, great. Cause that's what I read There's and took from it. in under the bed. <laughs> listen. I <laughs> listen. No, you I'm listen. Back, I'm going back to it because I want to, I wanted to, to talk about some specific things in the room. I'm thinking I'm going to do a tour. You can't even see the roof, but the roof I, I hand painted. painted. And then put glow in the dark stars on the on the. Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. Now where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm just turning it down. Yeah. So let's see. I'm at the part where you do do the panorama ramic shot of your original, and we're going back. So I just want to slow this down. Okay. So let's start with the end table that you have on the side of your bed. Is that like a teal? It's actually green. I painted that. Okay. Love that. It's a CPAP nightstand. Yes. And it's looks great. I love this chair. Which one? The one on the right? The random chair on the right. Yes. I got that from Mission Thrift Store. Then your carpet underneath the bed. I love the like purples that are in that. Mm, yes. That come out really good. Your wall with all of those different photo frames. So when I give a tour, I'm going to give credit. That is all my sister. Okay. I had a mental breakdown. My brain couldn't process. So she designed it. Where did you get the love seat? Uh, it's, it was my mother's and she had it in her goddess room. Stop. I swear. Because that is like my favorite thing in the whole room. Aww. I love that so much. I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder what thrift store she got that from because yep, I want long. it. Uh, yeah. So I, I love everything about this. I, is it gold that you have? Co gold color on the trim on the? Yes. Top? Okay. And, and I also have uh, the the doors painted black and there's like, uh, I don't know what you call it, dude, but there's gold on the doors as well. Okay. Yeah. So everything about it, I was just like, because when you said I, I'm painting my bedroom black, I was like, oh, this is how I'm going to have to lie and say that I like this because <laughs> I know mentally where she is right now. And so I'm going to do what's right and lie, but I love it. Uh, thank it you looks so much. So good. I love the the red crushed velvet end uh, bench seat. Thank you. It's just great. The whole thing came together really good. It's it's it is very eclectic and mm -hmm. catching all of these different sort of like like I said like Victorian gothic very. It definitely gives sex room vibes though. Just throwing that out mm. there. Like it totally, I was like black room. I thought we were in the red room. <laughs> you know. I wanted it to be romantic. Um, I will say that apart from the crushed velvet bed bench, the thing that belongs to my mother, obviously one of a couple of pictures in the, in the frames uh -huh. and um, the uh, CPAP nightstand, every single other thing that you see is from a thrift store. Everything, uh, all the framed uh, pictures on the walls, the thing above my bed, um, the bed itself, the nightstands, the bookshelves, the end tables. Um, it's all from thrift stores. And I'm yeah. so proud because I love thrift stores and mm, I love you things do. that were used prior by other people. So I love it. And I, I, at night the ceiling glows and it looks like you're laying under the stars. They're not the hokey stars. They're like tiny little dots. So they mm, look I love that. Yeah. You mean like the green ones? Uh, they look white at night. Yeah. Like the, I'm thinking about the ones that I put like on the kid's ceiling when they were little, yes. like the big green ones. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I put a moon up there too, a glow in the dark giant moon decal also. So it looks like. But yeah, I'm going to put a chandelier. I'm not quite done, but people were like, 
you know, I'm almost done. I'm pretty reveal, much. reveal. Yeah. That's no, good. Thank you. That was a very specific and cool compliment. I appreciate it. Well, I, it was just like I had said, I was waiting and I was nervous because, you know, you're, you're definitely transitioning, right? This cocoon to coming out to this, you, you know, your butter, butterfly. And I was nervous that while in the cocoon, you were, gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I was making rash choices that you were just going to be like, you know, I'd, I'd spoon it, I'd zoom in and there'd be like, like jail bars on the window. <laughs> and like, I was like, Oh, please tip. <laughs> and then I saw it and I was like, Oh yeah, this is so hurt. I can't wait to sh so sh show Sophia when she gets home from school. Aww. Um, cause she'll love it. She is, she is huge into thrifting. She tries to get me to take her thrifting every single weekend. Oh my God. I'll go with her next time. I'll go with her. Every oh, day. she loves it. I, I spend so many hours on the weekend driving her from thrift store to thrift store Aww. to thrift store to thrift store. You're a good mom. And of course I'm the mom though. That'll be like, I'm going to sit right here on this, on this chair that I hope doesn't have lice and I you know. go get whatever you want. I did have to get rid of a car once because of thrifting, which was bad. But oh yeah, remember? Yeah, I, brought, uh, I bought this plant, <laughs> and it brought German cockroaches into my car. It did, and, and they we, never left. They never, no matter what we did. I paid probably a thousand bucks total between exterminators, car detailers, and then Drew called me once, and he's like, "There's a freaking cockroach crawling up my leg. We're getting uh -huh. rid of this thing." And I was like, okay. And I got a brand new car. So when you traded it in, did you mention the so German cockroaches? He traded it in to his friend who oh, owned no. a car dealership who probably doesn't care because he's. Okay. Got it. Enough said. Yeah. Don't um, get me <laughs> so I'm getting me sorted. Don't, could you imagine the new family? Oh, look at this beautiful. Ah, I'm assuming that they have some sort of methods. I like they probably strip the damn. I don't know. Mm. I don't know, but that's a very valid question. Bug bomb. Bug bomb. I did bug bombs. Oh, industrial bug bomb, maybe. Maybe. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, so, anything new with you? Ah, uh, well, we did officially. I, I, I went public. With the laundry lady, I know we talked about it last week on the podcast, but we did go public. I did a live um, asking people uh, if they wanted to sign up to get alerts about the launch, which is going to happen on April 8th. The product will be for sale. Uh, so we are in the process right now of completing inventory, getting our shipping stuff completed. Um, we had 2,000 recyclable um, packaging mailers arrived yesterday on a pallet at our garage door. <laughs> this is so cool. Thank we you. have no room in our garage. It is just packed full. So uh, we're setting up a, our shipping department here in the office and, you know, just getting all of our ducks in a row. And it was great because we had over 3,500 people give us their email to get an alert about the sale of the laundry lady which blew my mind. I could not believe that many people signed up to get an alert. So, uh, yeah. So I've been talking about it a bunch. Obviously people are probably already exhausted from hearing about it, but it's, um, you are know, you getting quieter or is it me? I don't think so. I Maybe. don't know if you're just like turning away from the microphone and it like goes away. It's not like you got really quiet. Might be. Why are you wearing those earbuds? Because my other one's broke, dude. Oh, no. You need a new one? Yeah, I'm going to order a new one. Okay. Do you want me to order it and send it to your house? Because of, like, for business card reasons or? Just because. For friend reasons? Well, I, because I want it to get done. Is that rude? Yeah. Okay. No, it's honest. <laughs> um, and uh, I've gotten a lot better about, I don't know what the fuck, why I'm defending myself. I'm a, I'm the same person I've always been. Uh, yes. Order it, please. Okay. Have it sent. I'll get you a new set of headphones. Okay. Um, you. Are you yeah. paying out of pocket or is the podcast paying for it? Um, I, it's a business expense. Because I can just friggin' buy it after. Can this. we? Next. Okay. So. That was rude. 
<sighs> yeah. So it's been, it's been a, a long week. I didn't know what day it was all week. Yeah. When I texted you yesterday, I thought it was Tuesday. And I was like, you ready for Thursday? No, tomorrow. It's Wednesday. What day? Thursday. We're podcasting. Are you ready? Yeah. Thursday. Like that was my text to you because I was so confused with what day it was. It was adorable. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Yes, so but it's a valid question because you know me. You'll say, are you ready for tomorrow? And I'm like, I'm in Egypt. Sorry. <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> yeah, when worst. you when you come next week, I want to get you on my life three hundred and sixty. Oh my gosh, I would love it. Yeah, so I, that I so that I can just check your location about twelve hours prior to the podcast and know That's so where funny. where you're going to be. But yeah, so anyway, um, oh, that could have been it. Did you just hear that? Mm -mm. Listen. Did you hear it? Yeah. That could be the demon. That could be the demon. That's the noise she makes. Yeah. That's yeah, the, that's, that's the, the demon. demon. That's Kiki. She is the demon. It's been confirmed wow. right here. You heard it first. Kiki the demon. Why did it sound so close up, though? Because I guess she was doing it literally in the microphone and we weren't uh, paying attention. She, she was standing in front of the microphone like, what's up, guys? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could see Meredith's face. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, so it was a, it was a good, it was a good week. I'm so excited. Um, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't. Yeah. So I, and we get to see you next week. So excited about that. Aww. So there's a lot, there's just a lot of different things going on. Um, Should I bring anything? Like what's my attire for the. I have a shirt for you. Okay. Um, Am I going to cry? Should I bring Visine or is it like, is it real? Am I crying on camera? Because most times I can cry on command, but sometimes when the camera's on, it makes it harder. Uh, if you want to bring some Visine, you're welcome to. Okay. Real tears are preferred, obviously, but. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> I was, I was going yeah. to say something funny that uh, would make me cry, but I can't think of anything because I have a heart of steel. Oh yeah. So I feel yeah. Like I had something I wanted to tell you, dude, and I can't remember what's been going on in your world outside of the sex room. It's uh, not a sex room, <laughs> but um, I have been just ignoring everyone and in the honeymoon phase. Great. Yeah, I'm not going to ditch my friends, but you know how in the beginning of a relationship. You're like not answering your phone because you just want to stare into their eyes and like <laughs> say cute stuff and like be like, oh my God, I've never felt this way before. Nobody's ever said anything like this. And you just want to spend every minute with them. That's just what I've been doing. Um, and soon enough, I'm going to come back to reality. But uh, for right now, I've just been in my little love bubble. I've been working really hard on, um, I might have talked about this a little bit, but this person, really inspires me because they're a very good adult. <laughs> like when they're done with things, they put them away. Um, they clean the kitchen before bedtime. So you wake up to a clean house. It's all shit I've never done before. So I've been doing that and it feels really good. Like this morning, I've already gotten a load of laundry done. I've gotten my kitchen cleaned up. Um, I have assembled a piece of furniture, like I'm just killing it. And it's because I'm inspired. And it's like, there's accountability. I drank two glasses, two, one of these and a bottle of water. I'm just, I'm a good person, basically. <laughs> I've just been kind of killing it. It sounds like it. And I'm, I'm here for the love bubble. Thanks. I'm here for cleaning the kitchen. And doing laundry and all of those things. I do think that um, when you see things have been checked off your list, it does give you motivation to continue down the list, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I know you're not necessarily a list person. Right. So, because for me, like, that's my that's my jam, right? I'm like, 
I get to mark this off the list. Yeah. Like it's so exciting, right? You know, but, and I know that's not really your thing, but I think that, that it could, it could be somewhat of your thing because it sounds like you're getting this motivation because you're seeing it being reciprocated. Mm -hmm, exactly. And so for you, it's like, wow, like I'm putting in and I'm getting out like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, this is so thrilling. And yes. I, you know, I, I think that that's phenomenal. And if that continues, which I hope it does, I don't know that you'll necessarily have a love bubble that bursts. It might just be that the love bubble just continues to grow and, you know, you will have some normalcy that comes back, right? Because there's, of course, a honeymoon phase in every relationship. Exactly. But that doesn't mean that it will turn to something negative. It just means right. that as you guys go through this, things will, um, they'll, they'll think some things will get more comfortable. And, you know, I think as long as you both continue to put in and take out, I mean, it's the same thing that the therapist said to us last week about our love bank being basically bankrupt. Mm. And she's like, you're not putting in any deposits. So how could you expect to be able to take a withdrawal? And Dave, Dave's like, I've been putting deposits. in. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But I love that. That makes so much sense. Say that again, because I ruined it with a dumb joke. Say that. Again. Yeah, I know. So your love bank, uh, you, you must put in deposits in order to make withdrawals, which is just something that people have said, for the longest time, because it makes sense, right? Like it's just how a bank account works. You can't, you can't <laughs> take a withdrawal when you have no money in the, in the bank. Like you can't, there's just, you can't get blood from a stone. So, uh, you know, she was like, you guys have to put in some deposits and it can be in various ways. And so when, she, you know, I think I mentioned this on last week's episode, but it was like small acts get big thank yous mm. for a good long while. Yep. And she's like, and then, you know, have your one date night a week, have your talking time, have your, this, you have to have these deposits. How's so it going? it's going good. We've, we, you know, it was a, st a stressful week, but I think we only had now like looking back on the last week, there was only one yelling match. Excuse me. That was me, Phil. That was a burp, not a demon. Um, there was only one yelling back and forth and the yelling back and forth was over demon Kiki. Uh, that was Tiffany. Excuse me. Um, and it was because she still not house trained and I wasn't training her properly. And so she peed on the floor and then pooped on the floor and then Dave was yelling and then I was yelling and he's like, well, you're not training her right. And I was like, well, you're not training her at all. Oh, bitch. Thank so, you. Because I was going to Dave, love you, but I was going to say something. And then he was like, well, if you would just do it the right way. And I was like, well, if you would just do any of it. And so, and then I was like, we're right back to where, um, our therapist was like, you can't both get guarded and scream at each other to compete to see who's going to win because neither of you are going to win. Everybody's losing in this scenario. So you were able to talk to your therapist about that argument after it happened? No, no, we haven't talked to her about that yet, but that's what she was saying is exactly what we do. So I stopped and I calmed down and I was like, okay, you are correct that I have been lax with my training but you don't really help. So if you want to help more, I would appreciate that. Is he going to say something like, I didn't want the dog, so it wasn't my No, because okay. if he said that, I would kick him out because he, this, <laughs> he did want this dog specifically because he drove to Georgia for it. Oh, okay, okay, He okay. went to the Georgia Humane Society for this specific mutt. So I was like, don't he, he, he no, but okay. he's just like, I'm so busy. What do you want me to do? And I was like, well, I'm kind of busy too. So I feel like we're both, we're just not, we're just arguing right now because we have a dog that's still shitting and pissing in the house. So how did you guys come back together after that? I said, I will crate, crate her more and keep her on the umbilical cord leash, but so you weird. need to, but you need to also help. 
And if you're, if I'm doing something, you have her on the leash or in the crate, but like, I can't be responsible for this dog 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. Team effort. So, um, that was, you know, that was, we, we had that and it didn't turn into a blow up. It just, we started to yell at each other and then we deescalated. I'm very proud of you guys for doing that. Can we uh, talk about why you're calling it a fucking umbilical cord leash? Because like that. it literally, um, it, it clips around my waist and uh, the leash runs like a big ass umbilical cord. No way. And so I have to walk around with his dog tied to me. At all times. That seems dangerous. <laughs> it's a little dangerous. I have almost fallen several times. Yeah. Like um, even when you pee and everything? Well, no. So what I have to be better about is what Dave was saying is when you're busy doing an activity that she is not, like you can't tether her to you, put her in the crate. And my mommy soft heart is like, I don't want to stick her in the crate. She didn't do anything wrong. I'll just leave her on the umbilical cord. And then I'll trip over her and be like, motherfucking KK. And it's like not mm -hmm. Kiki's fault. It's because I didn't just put her in the crate for 30 minutes. And so he's like, just put her in the crate. She's not in any danger. She's literally just laying in the house that we have for her. So, you know, it's Kiki, stop. And as I say this, she's eating a box. Kiki, stop. <laughs> you really are pretty rotten. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, listen, I have a smidge of empathy for you. I also recognize that in the height of the biggest few months of your life with the most intense, groundbreaking, overwhelming things, you decided to get a mother effing puppy. Mm. And um, I could never I couldn't own a dog in general I don't think yeah you're not a you you're not a dog person and I couldn't own a dog during a mental breakdown yeah dogs do well obviously so I mean they'd be better during the mental breakdown but I'm saying I feel like you were in the midst of a mental breakdown during that time yeah yeah oh for sure yeah absolutely for sure for sure for sure and I just love that the one dog you got was like the most wild, <laughs> she's so fucking crazy <laughs> dog of all time. <laughs> it's a little she's, Chloe dog. She is so much. And, but she, then you look at her and you're like, fuck, you're cute. Like, that's the problem. Like, you're yeah. so cute, but you're just so bad. Um, but she's, that's, you know, they're good together. Kiki and Ruth are very good together. It really has brought the puppy spirit out of Ruth, which is great. Mm. So they're doing, they're doing well together. She, it's just, it's, it, you forget how much it is to, to potty train a dog. It is like potty training a kid again. I mean, obviously not to that extent. Don't anybody get offended that I said they're similar. Oh, but, dude, the internet canceled me over that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying they're, you know, you're cleaning up a lot of poop and pee during this stage and phase, it's, you know, I'm not saying that it's similar at all. I'm just saying it's exhausting. That's it. I'll say it. Uh, but yeah, but no, but like, so cats are just so much easier, right? Like everything about a cat is so much easier than a dog. So Jackson, a couple of days ago, was standing there and I'm like, oh, he's going to hack up a hairball. Nope. Wasn't a hairball. It was various items from my home. <laughs> <laughs> a pan. I was like, how did that come out of your mouth? And it was just like pieces of cardboard, like uh, maybe a Lego, just like, I was like, <laughs> oh my God. And, and then he just sits there. And that's the thing about cats. Like after they do a hairball or they puke or whatever, they just sit there and look at you like, clean that up. It's disgusting. What is mm. wrong with you? Yeah. And so I'm cleaning it up. I actually made Dave pick it up because I was so grossed out by it. And then I cleaned the tile. And then the next morning by his food dish, he had puked all of his food up. And I went, oh, no, this is not good. Like, does he have some sort of an obstruction? He's not keeping anything down. So then he follows me into the bathroom and he starts doing the hairball thing again. Well, he finally gets the hairball up, but there's blood. So I panic. I'm yeah, like, oh my God, I got to take this. I got to take this cat to the vet. Like, what are we going to do? So I start reading about obstructions and different things like that. And they're like, 
take the cat's temperature, do this, do that. So I'm like feeling its nose. I'm looking in the litter box for bad poops, bad peas, all of these things. And I, Dave was like, it's six o'clock. So we're either going to the emergency vet and paying through the nose or we wait until the morning. So I was like, okay, he, he's not acting sick. So let's wait until the morning. Like he wasn't bellowing or hiding. He was just out and about. Um, and in the, he looked great. So whatever he had eaten, obviously, you know, household items should not be eaten. He puked him up and then he finally got the hairball up and he's good to go. He's over there stuffing his face right now. But like, if that were a dog, there would have been an ambulance involved. Like dogs don't bounce back like a cat and they require so much more attention. Oh, I know. Um, I got a dog once with my ex-boyfriend and it was, I was like, I can do this. And it was the kind of dog, not the kind of dog, but I guess it had like, I don't know if you call it a disease or what, but where they eat their own shit. Oh, that's what Kiki has. <laughs> oh my God. I was on drugs at the time, but I remember it ruining me, my life at that point. I was like, I can't fucking cope with this dude. Because yeah. <clears throat> we had for some reason i don't really know why but we were like house training on pee pads or something oh okay <laughs> i don't know why i can't remember why um but either way if you didn't keep an eye on the dog it would just eat its shit and i was mm -hmm. like i can't have you lick me because i have discussed ocd and so certain things i can't do and so it was really hard to bond with the dog and i'm like i can't i'm just gonna be a cat person forever Oh like, yeah, I met somebody. I feel like when the kids get older and don't want anything to do with me, and I'm craving that like need to be needed, a dog would be a good option because I I would miss wanting to be needed. So I can mm -hmm. see myself getting a dog later. But at this point, where I'm still elbow deep in kids, no, oh my I god, I'm so soon. sorry. I'm so sorry to interrupt your story. It's okay. It's Holy okay. fucking shit! What? Look at this. Can you see this? I can't see what I'm holding up. Yes. Is That's that... my murder shed. Yeah. It looks. It's they painted yesterday. It looks amazing. Ah! Oh look... my gosh. I'm so happy for you. It I'm looks dying. Incredible. Look at the front door. Look how cute. That's your color. That I color know. reminds me of you. This is my favorite color. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. It's okay. clear as day. <gasps> OMG. I love it. I love seeing you excited. It looks so good. Can you believe that was the murder shed? No, I vaguely recognized it. Ugh. But I'm like, that can't be the murder shed. Because no. it looks so amazing. Oh, it came out so good. Did you know it was being painted? They started painting yesterday, but I didn't think they would finish. I thought it was going to take several days. Oh, what a fun surprise. Oh, it looks so good. I got to drive over there now and do a live and show everybody. You're so cute. Okay. Sorry. I did not mean to interrupt you with that, but Dave sent that text and I was like, holy shit. That's okay. It's probably the murder shed you. looks great. It does. Um, yeah. No, I don't think that a dog would be right for you right now, but I do think in in years you would like to to be loved the way because they're so, they're so different yes cats and dogs are just so completely different oh, and yeah. i i'm not i said it before I, I don't know how many times i said it to you and when we were on tour i am not a cat person i said i would don't ever want a cat mm -hmm. i'm never getting a cat i do yeah. not like cats i don't want a cat and then i ended up with two fucking cats hilarious because Brian had to have cats. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like walking through the house. I'm like, hey, girl, what's going on? You look good today. Yeah, all right. You know, and it's just like the stupidest fucking thing. And I'll just like be picking up Jackson and I'm like, how's it going? And he's like, fuck you. And I'm like, oh my God, I love you too. You know, and oh we just gosh. talk and it's great. And it's so funny. But it's just so, they're just so completely different. Whereas like Kiki and Ruth require so much attention. Mm -hmm. If I'm on a live, and Ruth wants my attention. She just starts barking until I stop the live and I go over and I sit with her and I'm like, what can I do for you? <laughs> she, she will not stop. It's so funny. 
And a cat does not care. They're like, be here, don't be here. Your existence means nothing to me. Yeah, I'd it's actually like, rather right. not be here. If yeah. <laughs> make that happen. Just give me some food. Yeah. Um, not to change the subject, but I am, this is how I know I'm getting old. I'm so excited. Uh, excuse me. Because I have an appointment to go get blood work done today. Oh, good. <gasps> Wait a minute. Is it fasting blood work? Yeah. So you haven't had anything to eat? No, but I'm drinking a fucking Red Bull juice. No. I forgot all about it. What does that mean? I don't know that you can do it now. Really? Yeah. Actually. Actually, you can have water. Fasting blood work, you can have water. I've only drank half and it's sugar free. I don't know what the hell else is in a Red Bull. Damn, Caffeine. dude. All right, I'm gonna have to reschedule. My <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Call, you know I what? Do? You know what? You know what? Just call whoever the lab. No, the, uh, no. No, why? Because I really don't want to compromise the results. I really need. Let me like, Google it. I, I I would say reschedule. I I don't. I mean, I'm I have not three a different doctors that I'm getting blood work for today: gynecologist, rheumatologist, general practitioner. I yeah. Can't around. Can you drink <laughs> Red Bull? No. <laughs> before fasting blood work, I'm gonna guess it says no. Hold on. Yeah, you cannot. Juice, coffee, soda, and any other beverage can get into your bloodstream and affect your results. Only thing you can drink is water. I'm so... I'm not going to call myself a name because I'm working really hard not to do that this year. But that was a very poor decision on my part. Well, you you weren't thinking... You were thinking fasting food. I know exactly No, I forgot I was getting blood work at the time I cracked this bad boy open. Uh, there you get it. Then that's just what it is. It happens. Just you, how did you schedule your blood work? Like on the app? Yeah. Yeah. Just reschedule it. Um, see, see what else they have. That's why I always, cause like I have to go in next week on you Monday. Do it first thing in the morning. Well, you try, but I, I can't get in. I couldn't get in until noon. So I was that like, was fine. it's going to yep. be rough, but I can, I can fast till noon. I'm like, no big deal. But, um, yeah. So I, my hormone, the doctor I see for my hormones wants to do a follow-up panel since having my ovary removed. Uh, because I had said to her, I was like, I had a bit of a dip in my um, energy level. I said, everything else is feeling really, really good. And she goes, oh, we got to get a new, a, a new level with your estrogen because you're down an ovary. And I go, oh my God, you're right. She's like, your estrogen levels may have dropped significant, significantly from the surgery. So we need mm. to recheck. And I was like, good call. It's like you're a doctor or something. <laughs> and and uh, so Monday I'm going in to get, uh, to get a new level because we obviously, we know what it was when I had two ovaries because that was the last blood work. And now we'll know what it is with one ovary. And then mm. we can, she's like, we can either up your testosterone or add uh, estradiol or do whatever or blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, great. That's good. At least so you'll know. not worried about it, but at the same time, that's why it's like, I'll always try to do that fasting blood work first thing in the morning. I've got some stuff going on, man. I know what else is new. Everyone's probably thinking, but like our demographic is mostly women. So I feel comfortable talking about my cervix. Great. <laughs> um, there's something going on with it. There's something wrong. I'm, uh, they're sending some shit off to pathology to make sure that I don't have cancer, um, which I don't. Um, but it's friggin' bleeding profusely, like hemorrhaging. Still? Um, still as in. So, so here's what I'll say. I had an ablation um, in, I, I want to say like a year ago, because my periods were always very heavy and the cramps were unbearable. And there was postcoital bleeding sometimes, not anything crazy, just like a little bit. And recently I have started 
bleeding profusely randomly for no reason, which is crazy because I'm not supposed to have like uterine lining because I had an ablation. So I went to the gynecologist and they examined me and apparently my cervix is what they call friable. Um, call it what? Friable, like okay. an egg. Oh. Um, but when you touch it, it bleeds and it doesn't bleed from where you would think it would bleed. It's like if you were to have road rash and then you poke it, you know how blood seeps up from like the skin of the road rash. Yeah. Uh, so it's not coming from inside me. It's coming from the surface. Oh, so, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense because you, you were ablated. So this isn't uterine. This is right, cervical. Right. But the amount is startling. Um, I thought I was dying. Yeah. Um, so they put this thing called monocell on it, which is basically like super glue for your, <laughs> I don't know, it's supposed to do something. Um, but before they do something surgically to fix it, they have to send my shit off to pathology because you get a friable cervix for different reasons. One of them is cancer and I haven't had a pap smear for two years, so they're just checking it out, but I'm. I'm sure that that's not what it is because my cervix was friable before. Yeah. You've yeah. had this problem for many a exactly. year. So, so yeah. I'm and really... she didn't say that she was concerned that it was that. No. Cause she would have said that if she was. Yeah. No. Now what I will say is it is technically an easy fix. Surgically. You just they can't, can't remove a cervix. Sure they can. I don't have one. I thought that you needed it. For what? To birth a baby. Know. But so cervical cancer, like if you wanted to not get it, you could just take it out. Well, that's what they do. If you have it, they remove it. But you don't, you don't need a cervix, honey. I don't have a cervix. Did you just honey me? Yeah. Sweetie pie. No, I need one. didn't know about your inner organs. I knew you were missing stuff. I didn't know what it was. I don't have a cervix, a uterus, or a right ov ovary, or any fallopian tubes. I have one hanging around left ovary that's just be bopping in some juice or something up there. Don't say that ever again. That's all I have. So wait. I don't need so it. If they take your cervix out, then there's just a gaping hole between. No. They sew it shut, and they make a little, it's called a cuff. And it's just a top. and Or Dave calls it the holster. And it's where you holster your weapon. Excuse me. That's what it does. What weapon? His weapon. I can't comprehend this. It just gets removed and they sew it together so it looks like this. No. So if this is your cervix, like a hole, like if you imagine a donut. No. So th this would be your, this would be your vaginal cavity. Okay, At the but top, there would be this, right? And this opens to let a baby out and then closes back up. Mm -hmm. What they do is they remove that and then they just go bloop. Okay. That's it. That's it. I think it's the holster that's confusing me. Well, this. Bow, bow, bow. That wasn't necessary. Bow, bow, bow. That's, it's holstering. Okay. You get it? Yep. How long is the recovery? Six weeks. I'd rather get a BBL. <laughs> if I'm going to recover for that long. Well, get them both at the same time. <gasps> is that an option? Yeah. I don't see why not. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Damn, dude. I'm so bummed about my blood work. I, that's fine. So that's some shit I would do, dude. <laughs> I would drink a damn Red Bull because I'm a crackhead and I can't help myself. And I'm allowed to say crackhead. It's not offensive. Because I literally am. Well, were. Were. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So uh, it is a, something that is like, if it continued down this path and they couldn't figure out how to get it to stop, you just remove it. All right. That's reassuring because this shit's for the birds. Yeah. Just, you don't need it. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not for... <laughs> having tons of surgery just cause obviously, but 
I can tell you that as somebody who's gone through that specific surgery with a partial hysterectomy, um, it was, you know, it did take all of six weeks to recover from it. Obviously I had the uterus removed as well, but, um, Wait, so where does your lady, um, lemonade come out of then? Nope. Lemonade's not a good analogy. Your, where does, you know how, like when you get excited, <laughs> I don't know why I said lemonade. I was trying to think of something obscure and not graphic. You know, you're, when you get excited, how does it come out? Because it comes out of the cervix. No, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't? Where does it come from? <sighs> Tiffany. Your <I'm> urethra? Just... <laughs> Where does it come from, Meredith? It has to come from somewhere. <laughs> it's. It, it's from inside of there. It comes out just fine. Don't no, worry. I need to know now. I thought it came out of your cervix hole. No, it's just. There's no other holes there. You don't need any other holes. So it comes out of, it seeps out of the walls? I guess. No, you can't guess. It ha I, I'm pretty sure it comes out of your cervix. No. I can't believe I'm Googling this. You have to Google it. Because I will. I can't believe I'm Googling this. Where does a woman's stop, liver... Stop, Oh my gosh, Tiffany. I'm right. I know. So where does it... So how, how are you doing? The skein glands? Oh, they come... It comes from glands. Where? Where are they at? Um, eh, they have a picture of a peach that's dripping. Eh, eh, oh my God. Okay, Meredith's not a lesbian. Confirm. Despite what you may have heard, you don't need a penis to ejaculate. You just need a, Tiffany was correct, guys, urethra. Your urethra is the tube that allows urine to pass out of your body. Ejaculation occurs when fluid, not necessarily urine, is expelled from the urethral opening during sexual arousal. You were correct. Your Thanks. first guess was cervix, which was wrong, but your second guess was right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not cervical fluid. People get confused um, with. It's not cervical fluid. Wait, so now I'm even more confused because your urethra is towards the front. Mm -hmm. So how does it get back there? It's That's only at the end. That's not how you get wet. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Where does that come from? Oh, well, I can guarantee you that it doesn't come from the cervix. Maybe. Yeah, but you also does. guaranteed it didn't come from the urethra, Meredith. No, no, you're right. I'm sorry. Listen, I don't have a cervix. And I, I'm picking up what you're laying down. I'm good. But now I'm just scientifically curious. Because I spent my whole life thinking that's where it came from. Which is uh, where let's I see. I'll read on. I'll read on. Hold on. Oh, uh, the front walls of the vagina have glands. Ah, so it is from the walls. Interesting. So the glands are separate from the urethra thing. So two separate things are occurring. Well, yeah, because. I thought the lemonade was the ejaculate. I got to figure out a different word to call it. <laughs> yeah, I thought please the lubrication stop. was the ejaculate. And then. No, the ejaculate happens with orgasm. Yeah, but it's the same thing that happens from the walls. It's not like two separate things. I think it is. It might just be different glands. But it's the same product, just different entry points. Could be. I'm gonna do have we to need to have a do we need to have a gynecologist on the show? Oh my gosh. Meredith, 
You're yes. a genius. Yes. Cause I have so many questions. Do we know one? I don't want to ruin my relationship with my gynecologist. Right. But if anybody listening has a gyno, please let us know. Because I have questions. I'll make a list of vagina questions. Do you know that I didn't even know until like my adult life that pee came out of your urethra? I thought it came out of your clitoris. Oh. Well, we can find one, I'm sure. Okay. Moral of the story is it all still works even if you have the surgery. Yes, that is that's what I was trying to. I know, but the way my brain works, I have once there is something I'm curious about that my brain wants to know about, we got to know about it. There's a lot of now, shit my brain doesn't care about. What my when I had my hysterectomy, the doctor did say that there was a chance that it could impact my orgasm. Mm. it didn't, but there's a chance that it could. And they're like, you, you know, it, it could just be different or it could be whatever, or, you know, and I was like, Ooh, and, uh, but it didn't. So all is well, but I'm just saying, you know, well, that's a, now I have more questions. You know what I mean? Like, so let's just, let's see about getting a gynecologist on. All right. I'll find one. Hell yeah. That's what I was hoping you'd say. I'll find one. Is it, wait, you're getting ready to launch a product. Let me find one. <laughs> well, I might know somebody. That's why I'm saying, let me throw an email oh, okay. out there. And, okay. and then if I can get somebody. Oh, I know exactly who. Duh. Love it. So stupid. All right. Not stupid. Um, what's her name? She's great. I know exactly who. Got it. All right, cool. Everybody send us your vagina questions that you want us to ask the doctor. I'm just going to text myself so I remember. Um, for podcast. <gasps> Excuse me. All right. I texted myself. So now I'll remember. Okay, great. Okay, great. <gasps> Jinx. Uh-huh. Okay. Ha. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you want to chat about before we wrap it up? No, but um, next week there there won't be a podcast. So we're not recording while we're together. That's weird. Well, if depending on what time you get in Wednesday night, we could do one on a on Wednesday night. All right, but, we'll, but we'll Thursday Thursday we'll be shooting all day, and then um, I th I have to drive to Gainesville now at six a.m. on Friday. Got it. So I'm dipping after the shoot, depending yeah. on how late it is. Cause I don't yeah. want to drive at night cause I have an astigmatism, but I yeah. Might... Yeah. So you're, you don't have to leave that night, but if you leave in the morning, I just won't be able to give you a good morning smooch. Well, we won't be able to podcast was the point. Oh, so we could try Wednesday night. Got it. Um, cause that would be our window of opportunity. All right. But no pressure. We'll see. Just don't, Expect an episode, but be delighted if it happens. Delighted? <laughs> delighted. delighted. <laughs> I don't know why you said that. Be, never mind. Be whatever you want to be. And uh, yeah, so join us next time uh, for another episode of Take It. Or Leave It. A podcast. Now you say the thing you said in the beginning. <laughs> an advice-ish podcast hosted by two struggling moms who have, who have no, no idea, idea what, what we're doing. doing. See you next time, guys. Love you, friends. Bye-bye. Toodaloo.